Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about how the SEC could be suspending Dark Pools for at least two days on AMC and GameStop. And I also want to give you some updates on the Evergrande Contagion. So stay tuned and let's make some money. But before I dive into the video, if you haven't already, be sure to sign up to Moomoo using the special Thomas James Investing promotion. Not only do you get a free stock worth up to $350, and not only do you get a second free stock with a guaranteed value of at least $50, but you also get a third entirely free stock with another guaranteed value of $30 on top of that. So that's at least $80 in guaranteed free stocks. And you can always sell those free stocks to get at least two entirely free shares of AMC just for signing up to Moomoo and depositing at least $100. Linked in the description below. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So this right here is all the confirmation bias that you need. That they are absolutely pooping their pants right now. They are requesting immediate change of rules so they can restrict and apply trading suspensions and they're potentially aiming directly at AMC and GameStop. So it says notices hereby given that on October 6th, 2021, the New York Stock Exchange or the NYSE filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission the proposed rule changes as described in items 1 and 2 below. The exchange proposes to amend its rules to add a new rule, 713, trading suspensions. Proposed Rule 713 would permit the Chair of the Board of the Exchange or the CEO or the Officer Designee of the Chair or the CEO to suspend trading in any and all securities trading on the exchange whenever in his or her opinion such suppression would be in the public interest. No such suppression would continue longer than a period of two days or as soon thereafter as a quorum of the directors can be assembled unless the board approves the continuation of such suspension. Proposed Rule 713 is identical to the rule text governing trading suspensions currently in place on the exchange's affiliate exchanges NYSC American, NYSC ARCA, NYSC Chicago and NYSC National. The exchange is proposing to add Rule 713 to the exchange in order to harmonise the exchange's rules with those of its affiliate exchanges and to provide for consistent authority to suspend trading across the exchange and its affiliate exchanges. Now obviously included in that basket of affiliate exchanges is going to be dark pools as well. And I think this is really important because of this line here. It says such a suspension would not impact the ability of NYSE listed securities to trade on an unlisted trading privileges basis on other markets. So basically if the NYSE wish to lock trading on a certain security, they need to make sure they lock that trading on all exchanges including the dark pools so they don't end up doing the same thing in January which is locking out retail investors while those sketchy dark pools are still kind of active. As this comment says here, some clarification behind the new rule. They will shut down the markets and or affiliated markets for a maximum of two days in the event they sense manipulation affecting the public interest or an impediment to a free and fair market. The wording in this rule is aimed at shutting down the affiliated exchanges, aka dark pools. They know payment for order flow is already an issue, and this is therefore the second to last puzzle piece. But I think it's also important to think about and consider a comment like this one as well. And you think that why? Do you think they're not going to look out for their benefactors? Do you not think they're going to consider our influence market manipulation? I hold, but I have no faith in this system to do what's right for me. We're on our own. And now I also want to talk about TD Ameritrade and other brokers taking a significant portion of time to DRS your shares if you have already submitted the application. I'm going to use this example. Now this one example is very much a trust me bro example because the guy didn't even take down any names or record any phone calls. So don't pay too much specific attention to this example but think about the reason behind the example. So this guy says, guess who just called? The TD Ameritrade team. This is broker something or other, and I see that we have a transfer request out, and we just wanted to verify that it was made in your name. This guy then confirms, the broker then asks the reason, and this guy then says speed. It's taking TD Ameritrade two weeks to DRS my shares, and therefore he wants to transfer to Fidelity so that Fidelity can DRS the shares instead. 
The broker asks the guy why he wants to DRS his shares, and he says he's assuming to DRS them with computer share. The broker then tries to say that, do you understand, they'll be a bit more illiquid when you DRS them, and they become a bit harder to sell. And this guy's basically summarised his thought process and says that at this point, I'm 99.999% sure that TD Ameritrade never purchased his shares and simply gave him an IOU, which has been speculated quite recently over the last few weeks. The speculation is that some of these major brokers like Robinhood, Webull, TD Ameritrade and others never actually went into the market and bought all our AMC and GameStop shares when we hit purchase. All they really did is gave us an IOU and took our money. And now that all of these apes are trying to DRS their shares over to computer share, TD Ameritrade, Webull, Robinhood and others actually now have to go into the market and buy those shares to transfer them and they're going to suffer a huge loss. He assumes that TD Ameritrade are calling because he's an XXXXX as in 10,000 shares or higher holder with a cost basis of $14.40 and obviously AMC crossed $40 today. Therefore, they lose several hundred thousand dollars by buying the shares to transfer when they buy them in the next couple of days. This is the same kind of issue that I touched on in one of my videos the other week. Whereas even if a broker is on a T plus 2 basis, even if they take your money and buy the shares two days later, in a squeeze, this could bankrupt stockbrokers like TD Ameritrade, Webull, Robinhood and many others as well. Therefore, at the moment, these online brokers stand to lose massive amounts of money from apes DRSing their shares, hundreds of thousands of dollars, potentially millions or even billions. Now I also wanted to quickly tell you about Yanev Sarig, the co-founder and CEO of Ethereum or Atta. Now you may know, but Atta has been shorted into oblivion over the last few months and recently had a small run up, very similar to AMC. He's tweeted saying Ethereum takes its fiduciary role seriously. We have hired a third party firm to investigate illegal naked short selling in our stock. This process takes time. Please stay tuned. Now, I think this is a really, really good idea. And I think this is something that Adam Aaron should also implement for AMC and something that Ryan Cohen should also try and implement for GameStop as well. Obviously, Ryan Cohen isn't the CEO of GameStop, but he is a large shareholder and could potentially pull some strings to make it happen. Now, I also wanted to touch on the AMC box office. Eternal's first day advanced tickets are beating Shang-Chi and Black Widow. AMC sees biggest day one pre-sales of the year. After October's vibrant box office, there is indeed more blockbuster business to come in November. Insiders say that advanced sales for the movie from Oscar winning filmmaker Chloe Zhao is estimated to have racked up $2.6 million in its first 24 hours of pre-sales. That's 86% ahead of Shang-Chi and 30% ahead of Black Widow over the same period of time. This is just more good news for the long-term bull thesis and bull case of AMC as a thriving cinema chain. Now, I also want to talk about how the Evergrande contagion is already spreading into UK markets. Evergrande exposed fund house Ashmore suffers a fall in assets. Ashmore is one of the biggest international investors in struggling Chinese property developer. Ashmore, the emerging market specialist that is one of the biggest international investors in struggling Chinese real estate group Evergrande, reported a $3.1 billion fall in assets under management during the past quarter on the back of disappointing investment performance. The UK listed fund house said that its assets under management declined from $94.4 billion to $91.3 billion over the three months to the end of September. Now that doesn't sound like a large drop, but also remember that it's only until the end of September and so far none of the Evergrande bonds have yet gone into default, so this drop could massively multiply over the next coming month or two. And an analyst at the broker Numis said that Ashmore's exposure to Evergrande and the wider Chinese real estate sector has undoubtedly been a component of the recent additional underperformance. And finally, I wanted to talk about something that's really, really bullish for Bitcoin and for AMC. It sounds like institutions are now even going to try and blame Bitcoin for the upcoming market crash. Bitcoin could trigger financial meltdown, warns Bank of England deputy. Sir John Cunliffe likens danger to a 2008 market crash and calls for tough regulations of cryptocurrencies. A senior Bank of England policymaker has warned that digital currencies such as Bitcoin could trigger a financial meltdown unless governments step forward with tough regulations. 
He likens the growth of cryptocurrencies to the spiraling value of US subprime mortgages before the 2008 financial crash. And he said that there was a danger financial markets could be rocked in a few years or maybe a few months or a few weeks by an event of a similar magnitude. So it seems like the institutions have now stopped blaming the retail investors for the upcoming market crash and are now going to try and blame Bitcoin for that same crash. Bitcoin and its nearest rival, Ethereum, tumbled in value earlier this year, but have recovered ground to reach towards all-time highs. Only five years ago, a single Bitcoin was worth about £513 or $700, compared with $56,000 or £41,000 today. Ethereum has also almost doubled in value since July to above $3,500. And he basically says there's reasons to be concerned about traders using digital currencies that could be worthless overnight. Although so far over the last 10, 15 years that Bitcoin has been around, that hasn't happened yet. And he says, of course, $2.3 trillion needs to be seen in the context of the $250 trillion global financial system. But as the financial crisis showed us, you don't have to account for a large proportion of the financial sector to trigger financial stability problems. Subprime was valued at about $1.2 trillion in 2008, he said. Now, I think if the entire $2.3 trillion global cryptocurrency market evaporated to $0 overnight, I think they'd have a lot more to worry about on their hands than just a market crash. Guys, be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think about the New York Stock Exchange filing this new rule to suspend trading on certain stocks for at least two days. And if you haven't already, be sure to sign up to Moomoo using the special Thomas James Investing promotion. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.